Hi, my name is Saint Suki Delacroix, and I'm going to read from Twilight Manors in Palm Springs, The Strange Case of Donna Reed's Missing Wig. It's the second in the Twilight Manors series. Um, this, this part is about um, somebody's dog. Uh, there's a couple who live in Twilight Manors, and their lovely little poodle, toy poodle, Elizabeth Taylor, has died, and Stephen and Brian are going to the funeral. The chapel was packed to the rafters. In Palm Springs, funerals are as common as staph infections. A woman at the door handed out programs and a plastic dog's head comb. The bereaved have asked all the guests to wear dog head cones. I know it's a little unusual, but it's an homage to Elizabeth Taylor, who wore one to stop her biting her own stitches. The pet cemetery worker was visibly embarrassed but soldiered on. Apparently she was wearing a dog head cone when she was struck down by the lawnmower. Didn't see it coming. The bereaved want us all to share that moment. Brian was speechless. Stefan wasn't. It's no bother, Brian. My husband here wears one of these all the time to stop himself from biting his own ass. Brian fixed his gaze on a stained glass window depicting a goldfish being carried up to heaven on the wings of a dove. At the altar, mourners lined up to view the body. Brian, do you think we should get in line? To see a dead dog? I don't think so. I've seen enough roadkill. Thank you very much. This isn't roadkill. This is lawnmower kill. I don't care if she drowned in a vat of rice pudding. I don't want to see a dead dog. Stefan and Brian clipped on their dog head cones and sat in the pews at the back of the chapel in case they had to make a run for it. Several of the residents of Twilight Manors were there, including Alice, Jenny and Mitzi, their annoying chihuahua. Brian nudged Stefan. I see Mitzi is here. That dog hates me. I don't think she's seen me yet. She's plotting to kill me. I know that. Obviously she can't do it herself as she's too small. But I know she's looking to hire an assassin. A contract killer. Chihuahuas are not to be trusted. Brian, we're being beckoned. Mr. Olson, that mortuary beautician, is here. I think he wants to talk to us. We had better go over. Olsen was standing near the altar wearing a dog head cone. Good to see you again. Haven't seen you since Graham's memorial. I didn't know you knew the deceased, Brian smiled. I didn't, but the Kandinsky's hired me to beautify Elizabeth Taylor. Stefan stiffened with excitement. You're telling me you've made her up? Well, Jean and Jeff wanted her to look her best, given the unusual circumstances of her death. Would you like to see her? I think this is possibly my best work. As an artist, I mean. This could be my Mona Lisa. But you be the judge. Brian was confused. Why are there seven Scooby-Doo lunchboxes on the altar? Well, they contain the remains of Elizabeth Taylor, seven boxes. She died in a freak lawnmower accident. She was sliced into seven parts. The last lunchbox is open, and that one contains her head. Brian and Stefan's jaws dropped when they peered into Scooby-Doo, but lunchbox number seven. Olsen beamed with pride. What do you think? The Kandinsky's wanted her made up to look like Elizabeth Taylor in Cleopatra. Golden flecked electric blue eyeshadow on her top eyelids and green paste on her lower eyes. Then a touch of black coal on her eyelashes. <clears throat> Stefan gasped. It's remarkable. You're a true artist, Mr. Olsen. You've made a dead toy poodle look like Elizabeth Taylor. They look identical. Apart from the fact that the poodle had four legs and the actor had two. Presumably, 
Elizabeth Taylor, the actor, had two legs. I, I never actually met her or counted her legs. Although she, she had two legs in Lassie Come Home, Lassie, of course, had four legs. Phenomenal, breathtaking. Brian was visibly shocked. This dead poodle is a dead ringer for Elizabeth Taylor, the actor. Have you made up pets before? Oh yes, and not just dogs. <clears throat> Why, only last week I made a terrapin look like Ingrid Bergman. Brian looked at his shoes. Stefan stared at the ceiling. After the viewing, the mourners sat quietly in the pews waiting for the service to begin. The Reverend John Hopperly, wearing a dog collar and a dog head cone, began his eulogy. Elizabeth Taylor was not just a poodle, but a lesson in how to love. Nobody loved the Kandinsky's more than their little fooky wooky fluff ball. Their icky picky puff bottom was always waiting by the door for Mommy and Poppy to return home, where Ickle Bicky Pooky Boo would jump around to greet them. Until one day, Booby Pop Frizzers lay hidden in the long grass with the spinning blaze of a lawnmower heading in her direction. What happened next shouldn't have happened to anyone, especially a toy poodle. A toy poodle with a heart of gold and only seconds to live. Brian and Stefan stopped listening. The Reverend Hopperly's voice droned on as ambient noise. Little Dinky Poos lived her life like a candle in the wind. And now we will sing Elizabeth Taylor's favourite song, Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On, from Titanic. The congregation sang. At the graveside, Brian eyed Mitzi in the arms of Alice. Mitzi stared back at him. If looks could kill, Brian would be lying in the shallow grave with Elizabeth Taylor. A grave digger stood nearby, leaning against a tree with a spade over his shoulder. He smiled at Brian, that knowing, I'm gay, you're gay, smile. The pastor made a short speech, and it was over. As the mourners trailed away from the grave, whispering amongst themselves, an eagle circled overhead. Brian turned back just in time to see the eagle swoop down, pick up the lunch box containing Elizabeth Taylor's head, and then fly away with it in its claws. Brian locked eyes with the grave digger. They both smiled. The grave digger then shoveled soil onto the remaining six Scooby Doo lunch boxes. Neither Brian nor the grave digger told a soul about what happened. It was there little secret. Thank you.